Uh, hello guys and welcome to another Daraja API tutorials. My name is Ben and in this class we are, we are going to look at um, transaction status. So head over to developer.safaricom.co.ke, um, go to documentation there and then go to Mpesa APIs and I want you to go to transaction status. This part is uh, the most tricky and this queries can fail if especially you don't know what the identifier type is or you use the default one that is here. So let's copy this code and head over to our project folder. We'll create a new file and we'll save it as and say t status okay let me just paste this one first and say what uh, t status that is transaction status dot php so we have it then we just need to indent it a little the process is just the same the first thing is to obtain the access token so we have our access token Uh, then this way we're making the requests, making the requests. So the request we are making will be to query a transaction. That's why I'm putting it that way. So making the requests. Access token. We had our code, or uh, probably on our field tutorial, teaching about this. So let me just maximize this and zoom in. We have some. I've had some several complaints on the same. So we need to copy this code. I'll go to our transaction status, paste it. And then let's just uh, clean this space out. So this is our access token. We need to ensure that we have filled our access token on the right place, which is here. We have our access token there. Uh, something else I like to do a lot, and you'll see is that this URL, and we also have another URL here, almost the same, and they can confuse you, especially when the code becomes uh, large and you're relying on that one. So the best thing we will do is we can just man name this one as our access token URL and let's just bring this access token here the access token URL so we have our access token in the right place then this URL will also rename it to t uh, status URL and um, we'll copy it and paste it here so everything is just uh, as it is on the developer account or sample code. The next thing we need to do is to fill all this information. So we'll head over back to our developer. We'll go to test credentials. Click on test credentials here. Then you'll have this. So let's start populating this one. This one I'm not going to split it differently. Uh, probably this one will be on our implementation how we'll be discussing more on it now I believe we are now able to understand what we are doing uh, the security credential so let's generate our new security credential so we'll copy the password there and we'll have it and generate the credential so let's copy this one and paste it there the next thing is transaction ID. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to simulate a transaction. So I'll open my server. We had a simulate code here. So I'll edit. Uh, we are still paying the same pay bill. Let me look. And that is true. So what you're going to do, you're going to change this one to around 500 shillings. Um, we'll also let's save this one. Let's delete this one, don't need it for now because we want to generate a new one. So once we have that one, let's generate that, let's simulate that transaction. So simulate, I hope my access token is not expired. 
okay so we have that one is successful so let's go back and let's see the transaction so refresh and we have our response so what i'm going to do here i'm going to delete this tunnel one so so that i can download the external and now we can look at uh, the amount that you have paid and everything all i need is the transaction number so for the transaction number party a it's going to be our pay bill which is 600183 this is found on our test credentials which is this test uh, I mean short code one uh, we're also going to change the identifier type from four to one if you don't do that you're going to have an error and the error that we're going to have is uh, in or a wrong initiate is it initiate or receiver something like that yeah but you'll have an error probably called seven or something uh the next thing is our result and queue timeout url so for that i'm going to copy our code on callback it looks the same so we'll just copy that i'm going to create a new file we'll save that as uh, transaction back url.php uh, transaction okay paste this on i decided to change this and say this is transaction status dot json sorry just want to say on json oh, text can also work nothing else to change in this part all i need to do is to write my url so i'll go to my register url i need to copy this code up to this part you don't have to you can type directly and let's just paste this on to save out some time we started with a lot of talking so then what you're supposed to do is to write our transaction the new file that you've created transaction callback underscore url.php i'm going to have the two of them being the same the next thing i'll need to do right now if we test this url uh, it's going to oh, even made a mistake that's nice so if we call we test this code you're going to get a four fire so if i copy this and we test it we'll get 4.4 four because we don't we have not yet uploaded that files but if you now start uh, refresh and transaction callback load and reload it now it's going to be found and you'll have no error so that's one way you test whether your code or you really have or this url is um, reachable or not so once you're through with that we need to write the remarks remarks you can write anything so i'll just go to our response and i'm going to look at um, check out uh, this one for example invoice uh, 092 so you can just say inv092 i'd like it to be the same then the occasion is just write anything probably let's pass our shop name so it's subtech and uh, once we are through with that i think everything is okay all we need to do now is to upload this file let's confirm that uh, our code is okay we are obtaining our access token we have passed it at the right place uh, we have provided everything the initiator credential we have command id transaction id we have party a we have identifier type results and all that so this code is fine now we need just to upload it so refresh and um, upload it so what you need to do right now is to access it so we have t status php and we are run it so we have a success response what kind of file are we expecting we're expecting a file that is calling itself transaction status stroke json so let's look whether that file first of all exits 
exists so t transaction callback so it does not so let's refresh yes we have a response and best uh, judging by the size we have a successful response so we'll go back to our url and we'll pass in the path to our json file and when you do that you find that now the transaction was successful look at the result code is zero which is true um the person who paid was john doe so if we have to go back to our transaction data here so if we just compare these ones so you'll find that we have this the transaction number which actually somewhere where where is it so let's look for that one first so yeah here it is so receipt number is that one then the name uh, the person who was paying this one Let me minimize this so we can have the two working together so let's go back so the person who paid was 0708 is it yeah here it is we have the name which is uh the names there paid to 600 183 safari com blah 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 all this information is now there for you so what you'll be checking for is probably you check for the result code before you now go to the result parameters in the implementation and probably you check the amount and you check um probably the amount yeah the amount is uh, what is important uh, I don't think there's any other information here that is uh, very important except probably this one transaction status completed very important and uh, the objective for the, this tutorial was to check whether the transaction was uh, completed or not and whether it actually exists or not and we have found that that one was okay so supposing we do that on an existent transaction so let's go back to our code and now change this one from 80 let's just put something like a g there yeah something that is impossible to have so if you go back reload and then we go to our transaction status so make that request so it uh, goes through reload this guy so we have our result and then the transaction receipt number does not exist are you together so we made everything was okay so reference that one result code was 20 32 remember our first result code was uh, zero on this one uh, funny my json code is not formatting very well but let me show you how to deal with that because we already have previous data so you can delete one of them and remain with the other one so I'll just go it is until we are through with the okay it's like um yes in a puzzle direction should go I'm trying to format this code so you can see how it's going to be just going to delete this we still obtain the same data so if we have that now we go back and reload our browser we have a formatted uh, text so you can see that the transaction receipt number does not exist and that's because we changed a very very small uh, part uh, from it being um, one to being G yeah so basically that's what you do when you are checking for uh, transaction status and you get a response and now that one marks the end of this class